All right, in this one, I wanna share how we can create our own bootable USB media drive for Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition. So we're gonna go ahead and start by opening up the Firefox browser. In the search bar, I'm gonna go ahead and type Linux Mint. And we have this option here, home, Linux Mint. And we see Linux Mint 22.2. We can hit the download button here. And we have the Cinnamon Edition, which is what I'm gonna go ahead and download. We also have the XFCE Edition and the Mate Edition. Let's scroll up. We can select download for the Cinnamon Edition. And right here, we do see the download size is roughly three gigabytes. So of course, you're gonna need at least a four gigabyte or larger USB drive. And if you wanna see system requirements, we can open up the release announcement here. And let's go ahead and scroll down. And we can see system requirements. We do need roughly two gigabytes of RAM. It is recommended for four. We need 20 gigabytes of disk space. It is recommended for 100. And then we can see the resolution at 1024 by 768. On lower resolutions, press Alt to drag windows with the mouse if they do not fit in the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and click out of this. And we're gonna go ahead and come down here. And this is where we can locate and select our mirror. And of course, I could select any one of these options for the geolocations of which we're in, or we can select this option here, World Linux Mint, and let that begin downloading. And while we're waiting here, we're gonna open up a new tab, and I'm also gonna need the Rufus tool, so rufus.ie. And once we're here, scroll down, we can see the Rufus tool, or at least the interface here. And scrolling down, we do have the download options. And the first one here, we do have Rufus 4.11. And we can see we have the option for a standard Windows 64-bit, a portable Windows 64-bit, a standard 32-bit, and a standard ARM processor. I'm gonna go ahead and install the standard 64-bit. And that is complete. I'm gonna come up here to the downloads. And we see Rufus executable is downloaded. We're just waiting for the Linux Mint ISO to complete downloading. And while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize. I'm gonna open up our file explorer, go to downloads, and we have the Rufus tool here, so we can double click that and hit yes. So we can see here, let's minimize this. We can see here, we do have the Rufus interface tool here. And if we want to create a quick access icon on our desktop, we can open up our file explorer and we can just drag that from the downloads folder directly to the desktop. I'm gonna exit out here, open up Firefox again, check our downloads and we see Linux Mint Cinnamon ISO file is complete. So let's go ahead and close out of these. And let's go ahead and just double check that in our downloads folder. Go to downloads and we can see I do have Zorn OS from an earlier video and Linux Mint from just now. And let's go ahead and open the Rufus tool here. Select yes. And now I just need to connect a blank USB drive or at least a USB drive that has no important data on it. And give me just a moment while I fidget with that. Okay. And we can see here new volume, no data. We're gonna close this. And we can see on the Rufus tool, it did auto select that drive. So if you have multiple drives connected to your device, just click that drop down and make an alternative selection. For boot selection, we're definitely gonna do disk or ISO image. We'll hit select. I'm gonna select the Linux 22 Cinnamon. And we're gonna change this to GPT. That's gonna be a modern setup. MBR is gonna be more for legacy. And we can see UEFI, non-CSM. Under volume label, I do typically let that go as a default. So Linux Mint 22.2, Cinnamon 64-bit. File system, FAT32, and cluster size, 16 kilobytes. We're gonna go ahead and hit start. This is just letting us know that we can set up an ISO image on a USB, or of course a disk. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay for the ISO on USB. This is just a warning, letting us know that all data on this drive currently will be deleted. So that's why I'm using a blank drive. Hit okay. And one moment here. I'm gonna minimize this. And we can see 
copying ISO files over to the USB. And through the power of editing, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this and then I'll come back towards the end. Okay, so we're back and we are roughly at about 96, 97%. We're just gonna go ahead and let this finish running. And 99. Boom, perfect. So from here, we can go ahead and select close and I'm gonna open the file explorer again. And we do see here, Linux Mint. And we're gonna go ahead, right click on this and eject so we can safely remove. And let me go ahead and get that out. And now we have a Linux Mint bootable USB and that's gonna be it for this one.